hey welcome back so let's fix our pagination so that it responds to the current page number here okay so instead of showing one two three all the time it should show us the active page at the at that moment so that active page is page seven here let's see if we can edit it so since we created a class it means once we edit it for one page we edit it for every single page so which is the advantage of doing things this way so already what we want to do is we will leave the previous page as it is because this is hard coded like this it should always be like this doesn't change first page doesn't change either and then next doesn't change either the only ones that change are these in the middle the one two and three right these pages right here so this one is active because it has an active thingy there if i move the active to page one like this you will see that page one will be the one that's highlighted apparently not so maybe i moved it to the wrong place let me undo that and observe where the active was. It was in the list item. So I should take it to the list item, not here. So come back here and let's refresh. There we go. So what we need is to know exactly which ones of these are active and that is done on the list item. So at least we know that. So all I need to do now is delete uh, the two and delete the three. We don't need those. So let's refresh and there we go so we need to create that number based on the current page so what i will do is <clears throat> uh, you see here <clears throat> excuse me the number here will be determined by page number so what i'll do here is instead of repeating myself with this page number what I'll do is I'll say, <clears throat> let me copy this. Let's put it right above here. Page number, because we'll be using it in several calculations. So better to just have it there rather than typing all this. So page number, copy that and let's put that here. Okay, then we have for previous, that's good. But then for this one, we'll put the current page number. So here, page number, paste. Whatever the current page number, that's what will be in there. That's, that's the link. And then same thing here, we're going to echo the page number. So that solves a problem. So if I now refresh, you see that we are on the current page and that's the one selected. If I go to the previous page, you see that changes accordingly which is nice, okay, very good. Until we're on one, next, next, if I click on there, we're on the link itself. So that's a good step forward, but we want a few numbers here. So this is up to you, how many numbers you want to add on the left and on the right. So maybe let's put two, okay. So display there. Now we can add a variable at the top here to tell us how many we should put on the left or on the right. So let's do that. Um, what variable should we call? What name should we give this variable? I, I don't even know. Uh, maybe let's call it steps. I don't know. Uh, you, you decide what value you want, what variable name you want to put there. So here I'll just put two. Um, you can call it extras or extra numbers. I don't know. I'll just call it steps. I've forgotten what I call it in my other projects, but uh, yeah, I have a number like that. So what that number will do is we're going to have a loop. We're going to loop here to create one of these and the other ones. So what I'll do is copy this. Okay and what to do let's do a for each loop here mm -hmm. okay yeah this will present a few problems but let's see how we're going to solve those so i'm going to do a for loop 
Now, for the first part here, I want the for loop to go in reverse. We'll start with the highest number, and this highest number is this steps, right? That value at the top, which is two, okay? And then, so we'll start with the highest number, and then when this becomes less than zero, like this, so it's two, so it's going to be two, one, and then zero. So if it becomes less than zero, then we cancel that. And then we'll put minus minus here because we are going in reverse. We are starting with the maximum number and then going down uh, like that. Okay, so in here, what we would do is echo out this. All right. Okie dokie. So... Let's see here, if I close the PHP tags and then open them here again. Yeah, pretty clunky, but um, I need it to be HTML like this. So let's see what we'll get with this. So we don't get anything, uh, right. Mm. What number is at the top here? That's two. Mm -hmm. So maybe it needs an echo. I'm not sure. What if I do this and that destroys everything? Hmm. How do you actually run this? Ah, syntax error, yes. Unknown token, yes. Hmm. Okay, so that's a fail right there. So what I would do is I would just do an echo like this. Use a single quote and then uh, close it right here and remove this PHP tag. Okay, so I'm just telling it to echo this, but these are functions here. So what I would do is I'll concatenate instead of having this. I'll do a quote there and then do a dot like this to join those and do the same thing here. Put a dot and single quote and same thing here again. I will put a single quote and then a dot to concatenate. Same thing here. Delete that dot like that. Okay. That way those, the, the reason I'm doing that is because a single quote on the outside does not evaluate the functions in here. It takes them as literal strings, so. Okay, so it means there was nothing wrong with how I had done it originally, I guess, because I still don't get anything. Let's see if I just add actual numbers. Let me put four there. I is equal to four. I is less than zero. I plus plus. So let's do, let's see what that does. Wait a minute, what's going on here? Uh, hmm. This is interesting. Wait, if I duplicate this, what do I get? Hmm, okay, it works. So why doesn't this work? I is equal to four. What's wrong with my loop? Huh? What is going on here? I do not understand. Okay, I may have done something wrong here. Let me try the loop with in this manner. The positive way of doing things, yeah? Okay, so that works. So which means the problem is my loop. Mm -hmm. So what did I do wrong with my loop here? I is equal to four, right? I my, uh, less than zero. So if I is less than zero, which is, is not here. Hmm. What's going on? Anyway, let me copy this 
while I still figure it out in my mind, let's paste this same loop on the other side. This side, let's use this steps. Okay, and then here, let's do plus plus. Oh, wait a minute. Let's do plus plus. This has to go in the positive direction. So let me put this. Let me start with zero and put the steps here. Okay, so this should work. Let's refresh. Okay, so that's working. We'll fix the other side a little bit later. So instead here, what I want to do is the I, um, let's start with one actually. Let's put one and then put equals here. That way we can do some math instead of that zero there. So what I want to do here is add here and say plus i okay and then same thing here plus i all right so if i refresh now this is what i get now of course i don't need the active on these because they are not the active ones so let's refresh and there we go so what this is doing is if I go next like this, you see the numbers changing to follow what's happening here. Okay, as you can see, if I click eight, I click 10, we go to 10, 12, we're going to 12. Previous, previous. So I need just the numbers on the other side as well. So it seems my, um, my loop doesn't want to work in reverse. So I have no idea what I've made a mistake with here. This is, um, this is weird uh, because this is supposed to work but for some reason it isn't so I'm not bothered by that we can always do the opposite that's okay we can just copy this for loop as it is and paste it here now the reason why I wanted it to go in reverse is because of the obvious if we do a mathematical transaction let me actually just copy the same the whole thing and put it here uh, because we're going to have a mathematical problem you see there's 11 12 and then 10 11 12 so i wanted this to go 9 8 right so instead of using i let's create our own i here so i'm just going to create a value i'm going to call it uh, x is equal to and i will use this value right here and put it there Okay, so x is equal to that. And then once every loop, uh, x, we're going to subtract it, minus, minus, like that. Okay, so that should work. And then instead of using i, we're going to use x here. That way x is going in reverse as i is going forward. So let's refresh. Uh, 10, 11, 12. Oopsie. That doesn't seem to work either. So why doesn't it work? Oh, it's because we need to subtract and not add. Okay, great. So we subtract there. Let me come back and let's refresh. Okay, there we go. So 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So this all looks nice. The only problem is, oh, by the way, uh, if I change the value at the top here, you see, uh, let's go up here. Steps, if I put four, then they're going to be four steps on each side. As you can see here so 15 14 13 12 11 ba, 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 ba. so you can do that or you can put two steps here for the front and the back and use them on either side of the loop if i put zero here then it means none whatsoever are going to work it will just be that single one if i put one like this and then i get that if i put two I get that okay now the beauty of this is that because this is a public uh, value I can go to the users view and right before I display this I can just say something like um, before the display as long as it's before the display I can do pager like this and actually manipulate that value and say steps is equal to and then I'll add six steps here if I want and then it to adjust when I'm viewing so in this manner you can see that it will be six steps on the users table but on the sales table 
it will be a smaller number. But this brings us to the problem that we're going to see, which is we are going to pages like negative one and zero, uh, especially if we're on the user's side where, yeah, you see, there's quite a number going this way. So we need to prevent this.